And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this uh, Monday, uh, September 10th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we read here can also be found at our website, IndianCountryNews.com, and here are some of the news stories for the day. The remains of a man who passed away while touring the world with Buffalo Bill were hidden for more than a century in an unmarked grave some 1,700 miles from his South Dakota reservation. This weekend, afraid, uh, Albert Afraid of Hawk was returned home. He was buried September 9th in accordance with Lakota tradition, thanks largely to a curious and persistent Connecticut history buff. Bob Young uncovered records of the Oglala Sioux member's death at a Connecticut hospital after a bout with food poisoning from eating bad corn. A few years ago, Young pieced the details together and reached out to Afraid of Hawk's family members. Afraid of Hawk began traveling with Buffalo Bill's world-famous troop, known as the Congress of Rough Riders of the World, two years before he passed away at age 20. He was among a rotating cast that helped educate and entertain thousands of spectators eager to hear firsthand accounts of life on the unruly terrain. Last month, Marlis Afraid of Hawk, Daniel Afraid of Hawk, and other relatives traveled to Connecticut from their homes on the Cheyenne Reservation, Cheyenne River Reservation in South Dakota to witness the disinterment of Albert's remains. Young, president of a museum in Danbury, Connecticut, had identified the location of Afraid of Hawk's grave at a cemetery there. It was a breakthrough for family members who had been searching for decades. In the 1970s, they even traveled to Washington, D.C. to learn more about Afraid of Hawk's death, returning with a picture but very little information. Afraid of Hawk was born in 1879, the third of seven children belonging to Emil Afraid of Hawk and his wife, White Mountain. His brother Richard was among the survivors of Wounded Knee Massacre in 1890. Afraid of Hawk joined the Buffalo Bills Wild West show in 1898 with a childhood friend from the Oglala Sioux tribe, and he apparently sent money back to members living on the Pine Ridge Reservation while performing with the show. A recent archaeological investigation indicates the buffalo jump at western South Dakota's Wind Cave National Park may have been used for various activities for as long as 4,000 years. Buffalo jumps are cliffs that American Indians used to kill bison by driving the animals over the edge. National Park Service archaeologists recently completed a three-week investigation of the Sanson buffalo jump in the park. They used walking surveys, technical equipment, and excavations to map the Black Hills site. Wind Cave National Park Superintendent Vidal de Villa says artifacts and features discovered so far lead the archaeologists to believe the site was used as a buffalo jump, campsite, and place for ceremonial activities. He says those activities apparently took place over a long period of time, possibly as much as 4,000 years. Community members, art enthusiasts, and critics gathered at the Farmington Museum at Gateway Park recently, eagerly anticipating autographed copies of the Tota Festival's prize-winning poster. And Dennis Ross, a Navajo Hopi woodcarver, celebrated winning the 2012 poster competition. The poster depicts two of his carvings, First Corn Girl and First Corn Boy. Ross hopes uh, that his work, which combines Navajo and Hopi traditions, will inspire Navajo youth to learn more about their culture and traditions. The Corn Girl and Corn Boy refer to the Navajo creation story. In the story, the first man was created from an ear of white corn, the first woman from yellow corn. The carvings, known as kachinas, come from the Hopi tradition. Ross started out carving in 1996 after a back energy forced him to stop working. He started presenting at the Tota Festival 15 years ago, and although he admitted to missing a few years, he says he looks forward to presenting his work there each year. Would-be wolf hunters are lining up for a shot at an elusive prey this fall when Minnesota plans to open its first season since the gray wolf came off the endangered species list. The state received uh, 23,477 applications so far for the 6,000 permits that it will issue through a lottery system. Department of Natural Resources spokesman Chris Niskanen said all but a few hundred applicants are from Minnesota, but people from 33 other states also filed paperwork. The season was uh, set in motion after gray wolves in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan came off the endangered uh, list in January of this year. Wisconsin 
was also approved to hunt, though litigation may delay it. Meanwhile, opponents of Minnesota's upcoming wolf trapping and hunting season are hoping to spur a public outcry. About 35 protesters gathered in Duluth this last Friday holding signs and marching. American Indians were among those demonstrators there as well. One of the group's leaders, Deb Balzer, told the Duluth News Tribune that Governor Mark Dayton has the authority to stop the hunt. Balzer says that uh, the ultimate goal uh, Marine uh, says that that's the ultimate goal to get uh, Dayton to stop the hunt. Marine Hackett, a member of the group Howling for Wolves, contends the state is catering to a small minority of hunters while most Minnesotans want to continue protections for the wolf. When the Eastern Michigan University football team took to the field for its home opener this last weekend, members of the school marching band were sporting uniforms emblazoned with two of EMU's former logos, including one of the school, uh, one that the school dropped 21 some years ago amid criticism it was demeaning to Native Americans. The Ypsilanti school will still be the Eagles, the nickname and mascot it adopted in 1991 when it ditched the Hurons nickname, but EMU added its Hurons and Normal Lights logos to the uniforms the band members were wearing for this last Saturday's game against Illinois State in hopes that it would uh, then doing so would foster greater unity amongst its current and former students include some who never got over the 1991 change. The Department of Interior says it cannot acknowledge the brother town Indian nation of Wisconsin as an Indian tribe under federal law because Congress once terminated its tribal status. Brother Town is based uh, in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. The tribe has been seeking federal recognition since 1980 when it had 3,137 members. A reservation for the tribe was established in 1832 on the eastern side of Lake Winnebago in Wisconsin, but the department's research shows that in 1839 the tribe divided its land among members with permission from Congress and gave up its tribal status to do so to become citizens of the United States to prevent their removal. The Interior Department says in its decision that its rules forbid it from recognizing tribes Congress has terminated, and the Department says only Congress can restore Brother Town's tribal status. The recognition would restore the tribe's government-to-government -government relation with the United States government. And that's going to be another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to say miigwech for joining with us, and come back again soon.